God placed a specific call on your life because he trusts you. However, when we doubt God's judgment in choosing us for the call, we'll respond with hesitation and fear instead of boldness and faith. In today's video, learn three ways you can trust God with his call on your life so you can effectively answer that call with confidence. Hello, beloved, and welcome to Beloved Women with me, Christina Patterson, where we help women to learn, love, and live God's word. If you are new here, please be sure to subscribe for new videos each week. And for those of you returning, welcome back. For beloved Bible studies, daily devotions, study guides, and unlimited videos to grow your faith, connect with me in the Beloved Women app. I also invite you to join our next Bible study series titled, crazy or called, as we will study the lives of 10 faithful men and women in the Bible to learn how to discover and answer God's call on our lives. For more information on how to join, click the link in the description of this video. When you ask someone to do something, the last thing you want from them is an excuse. This, however, is exactly what Moses gives God when God called him to go back to Egypt and lead his people out of slavery. As we look at the excuses Moses gives in Exodus chapters 3 and 4, we'll see that they are not different from the excuses that we often give when God calls us. Still, for every excuse Moses offered, God had an answer. Moses' first excuse was doubt in himself. He asked God, who am I to lead the Israelites out of slavery? When God found Moses in the wilderness and called him back to Egypt to free his people, Moses had left Egypt in the first place because he had killed an Egyptian who he saw harming God's people, the Israelites. Moses always wanted to help his people. He just went about it the wrong way. Now that he had an opportunity to do so in the power of God and not in his own strength, he was too ashamed of himself to accept the call. But God did not coddle Moses and tell him how great he was to encourage him to the call. God's response in Exodus 3 verse 12 was, I will be with you. Essentially, God is saying, it doesn't matter who you are. What matters more is that I am with you. Often we allow doubt to delay us from answering God's call because we're too focused on ourselves. As we remember our past mistakes, failures, and inadequacies, we talk ourselves out of our purposeful positions. But God knows what he gave you and what he didn't give you. He knows what's in your past and what's not in your past. He knows what you've done and what you haven't done and what has been done to you. And he's still calling you anyways, not because of who you are, but because who he is. Because he can use any situation or circumstance to do as he pleases. So if we want to answer God's call with boldness, we need to take the focus off of ourselves and place it back on God. To answer Moses' first excuse, God assures Moses he will be with him. So now Moses has to come up with another excuse. And that excuse is summarized in the question, well, who are you? This is Moses asking God. Moses was unsure how to let the Israelites know that it was God who sent him because he's like, well, who is this God? So Moses asked, what should I say when the people ask, who sent me? To this, God responds in Exodus 3 verse 14, I am who I am period. In short, this means the God Moses was talking to was not some other little g God like the many gods in Egypt. The God Moses was called by was the one and only God who created and ruled all. God explained to Moses that yes, he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of their ancestors, but first he introduced himself as the I am the eternal, sovereign, omniscient creator God of all. It's not a matter of determining which God sent Moses, but that the God, the one and only God Almighty, 
sent him. Moses needed to understand that the God sending him had the authority and power to back up his call. We too have to understand that whatever it is that God has called us to as our source, he has the authority and power to see it through. So we're not answering this call in our own strength. We are walking in the authority that God has given us when we answer his call on our lives. Now, how much more confidence and boldness would we walk in if we truly understood that we're not doing this because we think it's a good idea or it feels like the right thing to do, but that we are in alignment with the power and authority of God. The third excuse Moses gives God has nothing to do with himself or God, but his insecurity in how the people he was called to rescue would respond to him. He asked God, what if he goes back to Egypt and tells the Israelites that God called him to release them from slavery and they don't believe him? This excuse was rooted in the fear of people. Moses was afraid of how the people would respond to him. Once again, God graciously responds to Moses and gives him the ability to perform signs and wonders to get the people to believe him. The truth is that it was Moses' job to lead the Israelites out of Egypt, and he would need influence over them because he would need their cooperation. Still, God could move the hearts of the people to do what he needed them to do. Proverbs 16 verse 7 says, When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. God can give you influence and favor with people, especially when it's necessary for answering his call. God was not worried about how the Israelites would respond. Moses was. As long as we're being obedient, we don't need to fear man because God can handle that too. It's more important for us to fear God. Proverbs 29 verse 25 says, fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. And Galatians chapter 1 verse 10 asks, for am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. So if we want to boldly answer God's call on our lives, we have to release the fear of man and trust what God can do in others' hearts as we answer that call. So God addressed all of Moses' excuses, but Moses was still not satisfied. So he goes back to excuse number one about him being inadequate for the call, but he goes into more detail this time. He explains that he is not an eloquent speaker and that he has a speech impediment to which God responds that he is the one who gave us our mouths and that he will help Moses to speak. Still, not enough for Moses. So Moses finally expresses how he really feels by saying, oh, my Lord, please send someone else. That's what all Moses's excuses were really about. He just didn't want to do it. I'm sure Moses still wanted the Israelites to be free. He just didn't want to be the one to free them. Now, as patient as God had been this entire conversation, he's now angry with Moses because Moses was essentially saying, God, you made the wrong choice, but God doesn't do anything wrong. God was not wrong or mistaken to call Moses, and he was not wrong or mistaken to call you. He made no mistake when he gave you your purpose. Our excuses reveal our shortcomings not God's. Yet even while angered by Moses, God accommodated him. God assigned Moses's brother Aaron to speak to the people for Moses and serve as his mouth. Finally, Moses sets out to answer God's call and he does go on to lead God's people to freedom. So I want to ask you, are you having a similar conversation with God? Are you bringing more doubt than belief, more insecurity than boldness in the one who called you, more fear than faith? The only cure for your excuses is to stop looking at yourself and look to the all-powerful, sovereign, promise-keeping, gracious God that called you. 
to help you learn even more about how to confidently answer God's call on your life, I invite you to join our next Bible study series titled Crazy or Called as we look at the lives of 10 ordinary people in the Bible called to extraordinary purpose. If you are ready to find the boldness to confidently answer God's call on your life, join now and get the study guide to follow along by visiting the links in the description of this video. If you enjoyed today's video, will you do me a favor and share it with a friend because you just never know who might need some beloved encouragement today. And for even more beloved encouragement, be sure to download the Beloved Women app available in the Apple and Google Play stores for unlimited and ad-free access to beloved Bible study series, daily devotions, exclusive content, and videos to fill your soul. I look forward to connecting with you there. As always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, be beautiful, be blessed, and be loved.